CDC reports more than 700 cases of measles so far this year, making it the worst outbreak since the disease was thought to have been eliminated 19 years ago. Good evening, I'm Dirk Rowley. And I'm Tara Brantley. Health officials say the rise in measles outbreaks is largely because more people refuse to get vaccinated. But those who refuse say they have good reason. Wayne 15's Angelica Robinson joins us now with this 15 Finds Out report. Angelica. Dirk and Tara, there's a growing number of people refusing to vaccinate their children, and we wanted to know why. You may have heard the term anti-vaxxers used to describe them. We put a call out on Facebook, which received more than 2,000 responses. Many say they fear injury or illness from the vaccines, some even death. Twelve days after his second birthday, Eli Sugar collapsed while playing outside rushed to the hospital never to wake up again. His mom, Rebecca Mikas, devastated by his death and desperate for answers. What could have caused a perfectly healthy two-year-old with no known medical issues to just go limp one day and not come out of it? Mika says Eli received all of his immunization shots on schedule, but she wonders if those vaccines could have been the cause. As a 19-year-old, new mom, I didn't know I had the choice. My doctor said do it, so I did it. When the autopsy came back, the cause of death was unknown. Mika says Eli had the MTHFR gene, which she believes impacted his ability to process some ingredients found in vaccines. Medical professionals, though, dispute that claim. I just knew that going forward with more children, I wasn't going to be putting them into that situation for anything possible to happen. Many anti-vaccination activists believe that too many vaccines can overload the immune system, causing injury or death. They are also concerned about toxins in vaccines. For Ashley Wilson, mommy groups on Facebook raised fear and doubt about if she should vaccinate or not. A lot of them are anti-vaccine, so they're all you know, seasoned parents. So I was like, well, they must know what they're talking about. Instead of following the vaccination schedule recommended by the CDC, she spread out her son's vaccinations. I think a lot of it, at least for me, it was fear-based. I just didn't want to put my child into harm's way. I didn't want anybody pumping chemicals into him or you know, hurting him. But as she continued to research, her stance began to change. She was reassured that vaccines were safe based on information released by the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics. It just made more sense that the vaccines actually do what they're supposed to because, you know, they release these vaccines and then the diseases go away. According to the Indiana State Department of Health, 67% of children under the age of three have completed the recommended series of immunizations Organizations. That would include vaccines for measles, mumps, and polio. I don't know of anything in medicine, honestly, that's more closely monitored. Allen County Health Commissioner Dr. Deb McMahon says the risk of getting those diseases is far greater than the risk of getting the vaccines. She's confused by the growing number of people who refuse to vaccinate. The very fact that you have these outbreaks of mumps and measles proves that it's really impacting the, the herd immunity. Though public health officials insist vaccines are safe and effective, a local nurse says there's a secret group of medical professionals who agree there's enough evidence to cause concern. I'm a nurse. I, I need the facts. Like, give me the information so I can make the best decision not only for my family, but for my patients. This nurse asked that we not reveal her identity out of fear that her opinion on vaccinations would put her job at risk. She believes more studies are needed to determine if vaccines play a role in childhood illnesses. She's concerned that the pharmaceutical industry, CDC and FDA are overlooking potential harm caused by vaccines. Is it your thought that because there's so many questions surrounding either the side effects or efficiency of them that you'd rather not? Both, yeah, absolutely, because you are you have to have a benefit to outweigh the risk. Why is there so much secrecy? Why is there an absolute refusal to entertain the idea that there may be some concerns to have? I want people to understand it's not like a one and done, oh, we looked at that and no more. These are ongoing groups that are constantly looking at the data that's coming and being generated by healthcare providers who administer the vaccines. And, and are looking to make sure that, that we, they make the safest and most effective recommendations. Still, Rebecca Mikas remains confident in her decision not to vaccinate her children. She wants others to have an open mind when it comes to the vaccination debate. Like, if you think it's what's best for your kid, 
great, fine and dandy, but don't try and make me do it and I won't try and make you not and the world will still go on. Coming up tonight at 11, we'll have more from that nurse that you saw there in the video. She explains why there's a growing community of doctors and nurses who are advocating for vaccine safety. Angelica Robinson, Wayne 15 News.